all right um, welcome back to my channel guys and in today's video we are going to be flying the Boeing 737 all the way from gold and dark starter what that means is uh, the engines are completely off and there is no ground power and there is no APU it's just running starter from fresh from scratch and imagine you're off somewhere away from the gates and uh, you need to turn on the engines from uh, maybe a long-term storage or you know because usually when aircrafts have a tight turnaround time they just keep their APUs switched on and if they have a tight turnaround so that just saves time and they can just go right in and right out but in this case we just completely shut off and we're gonna start the engines from scratch and we are in beautiful Honolulu International Airport, PHNL, and today we are going to be taking a flight to KSCA, that is Seattle Tacoma International Airport, in um, Washington State, US, and we will be flying from uh, runway 22 right in Honolulu International Airport. This video will not be covering the programming of the FMC, but uh, because it's pretty long and complicated it's not that hard but we'll be doing that in a dedicated video in the future uh, so we'll be skipping over those steps we'll not be going through that uh, so let's go ahead and start this engine I mean start this Boeing 737-800 let's go so before you even come into the aircraft you need to complete the brief light flows uh, you need to download charts you need to check the weather the forecast you need to check and sign make sure the calculations are correct for your cargo your fuel as captain you need to make sure whatever you're getting on is verified and you it's your sign at the end which gets you airborne then you're gonna file a flight plan uh, usually like when the bigger aircrafts like the Boeing 787 they have a huge screen here and they can all oh, they have also have a printer so you're directly connected to their company's database and they can just print them out you know live on the go but this is a older version um, we just uh, usually they for small aircrafts like this they'll use an iPad or uh, usually they'll hook it up here or um, some kind of chart if they have any uh, so we won't be doing any of that today we're just gonna start the engine start the aircraft and go on our way all right so the first thing after the pre-flight flows will be to do the pre-flight checklist and the beginning we just check that our parking brakes parking brakes are set and they are the next thing the obvious thing we just gotta get something going here you know and we'll do that by coming up to the overhead panels get some electricity going on in the aircraft um, so we we'll just start the batteries right here so these are the batteries just flick them on so they'll give you the amps and the voltage right here in older generations they used to have a analog dial here but yeah you can use that to battery if you want so it's drawing battery power you don't want to keep this for too long or else the voltage will just go down and you'll never be able to turn on <laughs> all right so the next step will be to start the left fuel pump from the left side of the aircraft both the aft and the forward the reason we do that now is we're gonna start the APU Make sure the APU valve is off so that all of the air gets into the APU. For those of you wondering what is an APU, APU is the auxiliary power unit. It's used to provide the aircraft with uh, electricity. It, it has its own generator. It's basically like a third engine rather than the two in the back of the tail. And it's there on almost every aircraft. Uh, smaller ones don't, I believe. Okay. Just get rid of that warning there and oh, now that we have our fuel pumps running we will be starting the APU by just flicking this switch on. Now you just gotta wait for this meter to go all the way up. Uh, I have said that to just go up instantly because uh, I'm a bit impatient, but in real life, it just takes about uh, a minute or two minutes sometimes, depending on the the situation of the APU, whether it's new or old, you know. So this is hypothetical. It just started in two seconds, I believe, two or seven seconds. So it's turning on. We, what you're waiting is for this blue light to come on in the bus section uh, so that we consume the APU power. 
uh, we can take ground power uh, because we are at the airport uh, it's a small tube they give outside the aircraft right here but uh, we don't we, we don't need that we are doing a cold and dark startup here so we'll wait for the APU to turn on completely Okay, so the blue light has now come on. Uh, I just could have flicked this switch to now consume all the electricity from the APU. And now you should see all the instruments coming up. Usually this does not happen once you get the electricity, uh, especially your artificial horizon and all this inf instruments needs to calibrate at the beginning. Um, that is done by going up here and you basically align the navigation system it's basically telling where the aircraft is so it's the irs mode selectors it should be set to nav uh, it's done for us so uh, and you can't change it in this explain uh, model of the aircraft but it's okay so the our systems are calibrated we'll assume that i uh, just get rid of the warning and our apu is running so we have all electricity on board now we'll go to the next step which is to turn on the lights, get some lights outside. The logo, the anti-collision, the wing, the wheel and the strobe lights. We'll take this opportunity to turn on the circuit breaker lights, the panel lights, get some lighting going on here. Uh, and even the captain's uh, and the co-pilot's light. Uh, you may see a yoke here, you can hide it with the Y key. But just get some light going on. Even his... All right, now um, next step will be to turn on the cabin lights, turn on all the utilities. So it's already on, as you can see them. If you turn it off, they won't have any entertainment systems running on the aircraft. So to turn this off to switch off the entertainment. <laughs> all right, so next uh, we're going to keep make sure our uh, emergency exit lights are armed. Uh, if you want, you can test this out uh, by, you know, just turning them on. Just make sure that it's armed. Keep the guard close, that's it. Next uh, will be to turn on your L packs and R packs, basically your air conditioning. You can run it via the APU. I wouldn't like to do that because uh, I want the APU to provide uh, maximum uh, power to the engines to turn it on later. I don't want to waste some of them in the APU just yet. Uh, especially in the older aircraft, you don't want to do that, but uh, you can turn on the circulation if you want. All the fans can be running. That's fine. All right. Then we got to do the IRC. That's already done for us, as I mentioned. Then we got to do the FMC. We won't be doing that right now um, because, as I said, it's very complicated. Uh, not that complicated again. Uh, it will require a whole video of its own. So we'll leave that out for now. We know where are we going. We're going to KSEA. Just we're just doing the takeoff part in this video. All right. So next step will be to get the flight clearance. We're not gonna do ATC in this uh, uh, tutorial as well because we are the ATC and there's no one flying around us. <laughs> like it's uh, empty aircraft, empty airport. <laughs> All right. Uh, at this moment, you just wanna ask them the altimeter basically they just tell you after you get your uh, flight plan clearance uh, ask them the altimeter settings in this case it is set to uh, 2991 uh, and it's in IN uh, if you want the bi barometric or HPA you can set that if you, however you like uh, just give that an I, I, IN and the units are fine and uh, depending on the height of the airport you change the altimeter settings to give an idea of the aircraft where it is exactly from the sea level so Hawaii is pretty much uh, on the sea level uh, like uh, I would say some parts of it are below sea level <laughs> so according to that you said that if you're in the Himalayas if you're in the mountainous region you want to bump that up so we are good to go at 29.91 okay the transponders are also set I believe yeah you want to also set the squawk code I think it's for Hawaii, it's uh, 
4700 and you can set that to TA RA. Uh, now you're transmitting this squawk. Sometimes uh, we use some other squawk codes um, to actively signal your condition of the aircraft. For example, uh, it's coming up on the screen right now for hijacking, for emergency situations, you change the squawk code secretly and let the air traffic control know your situation without even telling them. Uh, these are our transponder settings, all the radio frequencies and our uh, ILS approach frequencies. We, we'll be going over that in a later video. So that's done. Uh, you can get lights up here if you want uh, these lights. So just keep that a bit low. It's getting down. It's 645 local time in Honolulu. So, oh yeah, and this, this is the flight deck tour. I have no control over this, according, as you can see, explain won't allow me to do that, but yeah, you can deny access, you can keep it to auto, so if anyone has an access code, they can come in, or you can unlock it completely, you can just let anyone come in and out, uh, yeah, alright, so the next step will be to set your autopilot, uh, we will be going, it's already set by me already, uh, we'll be cruising at 30,000 30, feet, and our heading will be 220 because we'll be flying from uh, runway 22 right. So this is 22 right, this one. Uh, 22 left is this one. Uh, 220. We are in gate number G5. We'll be just going up and away from this way. So that's why I said this to 220. I can also test uh, if everything is functioning. So it is functioning. You can test the lights uh, right here if you want to do that. Make sure all the lights are on, all the warnings are going on. What you can do right now is turn on your uh, heating if you want them. If you're in a cold environment, you want to do that. Uh, get your heaters going on. Um, I forgot the your dampers. Uh, next in our checklist will be the your dampers. Uh, these are the control surfaces at the back of the aircraft at uh, the rudder so you can yaw the aircraft flight altitude will be uh, 30,000 feet so when I set that out for your pressurization uh, keep that in 30,000 feet and our uh, landing altitude will be let's say just it'll be written in your flight plan so I'll just keep that 200 make sure this is an auto if it's manual, your engines are not going to pressurize the cabin. Uh, people are going to pass out with hypoxia. Uh, there are real events in life where the pilots didn't see, notice this one. It was set to manual and they all just passed out. Uh, if it's manual, there'll be take a configuration warning anyway. So your, the aircraft will remind you. So that's done. And uh, next we're going to set the flight directors on uh, of the autopilot uh, these two switches right here uh, we are gonna turn on LNAV and VNAV but that's our takeoff and these are related to the FMC which we have not programmed in this video we'll do it in a future video so for that you, you wanna use these buttons okay uh, we have set the altimeter already should be really going in a step by step okay <laughs> never mind um, your auto brake setting should be set to rejected takeoff. Uh, so once when you're taking off and you decide to reject, the aircraft's gonna automatically deploy the speed brakes and whatnot to slow down. Okay. Check with the common radios. Auto brake should be set to rejected mode, and uh, we already set the altimeter to IN according to your needs, and we have. Uh, the doors and the com radius check the before start checklist we request the pushback so i'm gonna file a pushback mm. oh so i'm just gonna delete everything so that you can see what i'm doing we'll be going down that way so just gonna keep our aircraft aligned this way and accept the plan. Ground to cockpit. Plan acknowledged. Call me through the menu when you are ready. Yep, I'm ready. So let's go. Start the pushback right here. 
ground cockpit. Toe is driving up. This is a very good plugin. If you want that, guys, you can. I'll probably leave a link in the description if you want this. Uh, better pushback and uh, terrain radar uh, for these instruments here. If you want to see the terrain, uh, it gives a cool visual uh, layout of the terrain. You can also change the pattern if you want. crazy okay just turn that off for now uh, our tour truck has arrived okay all doors and hatches are closed ready to connect okay uh, let's get a better view of that guy <laughs> let's see what he's doing and It's gonna lift up my aircraft. So connected and bypassed and inserted. Release parking brake. Okay, so we're gonna release the parking brake. You can press B on the keyboard or just press this button. Starting pushback. And you may start engines. Okay, so we'll start the engines. We are in the second step right now. Um, let me just arm the auto throttle here. Yeah, okay. So we'll start the engines. To do that, turn on all your fuel pumps. And make sure the EPU bleed is now on. So it should provide all the air going to the engines and the cabin and everything. Make sure that's on. And set this to ground. Just wait for that to go to about 25. Um, okay, and uh, turn this on to idle. Okay, once you do that, the this switch will go back to the normal position, and at the same time, we just just can. Do the, after it goes back to auto, just turn the right one on to ground and we we can see that now we can use the bus power off of the engines rather than the APU so we just, I'm just going to do that right now use the engine power and you can see we have a lot of a uh, uh, lot of AC vo voltage and amps now we can really power the cabin uh, everything the aircraft is fully powered make sure your hydraulics as well uh, everything is on uh, just get the heating on if you want to as required now operation complete set parking brake okay turn on the parking brake uh, connecting to stand by yeah, let's just wait for the engines to turn on almost almost done all right, we'll, we'll wait for the ground uh, equipment to be removed. Uh, that's the toe in this case. So it's disconnected and bypassed and has been removed. Hand signal on the left. We'll see you next time and have a safe flight. All right, thank you. Uh, we'll just get some doom light going because it's getting dark here. And uh, we will uh, now turn off the if you bleed. Uh, we can turn off the APU right now because we are now fully powered uh, to save fuel. Uh, some people also taxi with one engine. Okay, start switches are back to auto and uh, we'll set the flaps to 5 degrees for now. Uh, yeah, so 5 degrees and elevator trim. I like to set that to six. Um, it's already set to six, so we are good to go. Uh, you can set that as per your center of gravity, whatever you feel is right. Uh, 
check your flight controls at this stage. Is everything all right? Uh, it should move. So it is moving. We're good to go. And uh, we will now ask uh, for the taxi clearance. Uh, assume we got it. And this, 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 this. Okay, now we will be going to our assigned runway, which is 22, right? And let's go. Uh, you just want to push your throttle a little bit, about 30% power, something like that. Uh, yeah, a bit more. A good trick to follow the uh, yellow line for the taxi lines is to align your uh, fire warning and master caution warning with the lines so it's kind of easy to do that. Okay. <laughs> we have been following the wrong one. Okay. Yeah. Don't get above, uh, I think, 20 knots. Don't get above that. Okay, let me just go into the runway. Just gonna wait here. Two lines and two spaced out line means it's a runway intersection. So you gotta wait here until you get your clearance at the moment. Um, we just simulate that right now. Keep your runway lights on. And let's go in. Okay, uh, we'll just complete the before takeoff checklist right now until we get our clearance. Uh, parking brace set, central fuel pumps are required, fuel flow is good, cabin lights are good. Uh, we have our passenger seat will sign on. Just chime a bit there. Um, light instruments check, engine, engine instruments check, takeoff data is check. And uh, vertical profile up to it is just to 600 feet or 800 okay uh, this is good to go okay and now equipment is good landing lights are on strobe lights are on taxi lights are on transporter is good TFC clock if you want to start the clock you can do it right here I'm not gonna do that before takeoff checklist complete and we will get the clearance and now we can go Eighty knots. Hundred and twenty. 
uh, V1 and rotate. Uh, landing gear up, positive rate. Uh, we'll keep the auto brake off now. Engine starts it is off, runway turn off lights off, and uh, cabin lights as required. Uh, after takeoff checklist complete. Uh, we'll just set the autopilot now. Give it a due north east heading towards uh, Seattle. And our plane is gonna eventually climb up to 30,000 feet. We'll increase the rate of ascent. I will keep the flaps up now. Alright, uh, that was the tutorial for X11 Cold and Dark Startup along with the takeoff. Uh, in future videos, we'll be looking at more of the details of FMC and landing uh, so stay tuned for that I will see you in the next video thank you